Another week has begun, and I'm starting out rather early today. It's 5.30 a.m. I have an occupational therapy appointment at 7. I thought the last one was my final, but she still thinks that I need some work, and I agree. Uh, I'm in the studio early so that I can finish up some of the cleaning and organization. My mom and sister are coming at 11 today uh, to use the gym here. Uh, I've got some exercises that I want them to do uh, for my mom's spine issues and my sister just to get her somewhat active. Uh, so I'm going to clean up, finish the gym in the storage area, and uh, it's a good excuse to get everything up and running, having people come to visit. So I find that when I do things for myself, they're a bit slower than if I do them for someone else. It's kind of like a carpenter. Their house is never quite finished, but <laughs> they have a much easier time finishing other people's houses. Okay, here we go. So I'll show you the progress I've made on my gym area. I've got my stand-up spin bike. I decided not to get rid of the treadmill because I can lean forward on it. I can rest my arms on these guys and really push out the back and that's great for your glutes at an incline and then I've got the the Nordic Flex machine which basically lifts your body weight um, my dip bar I still have a lot more work to do in here but feels like a nice organized second gym area I'm trying to get my strength training volume back up again so knees to bar which is my new favorite exercise better than toes to bar Chin-ups, close grip, dips, one set of V1 pull-ups, and then my pulling technique or pulling machine with the new Kruger banded technique. So I'm very aggressive with my arms, high above my head, and there's a resistance band around my waist pulling me towards the machine. So I'm leaning forward. And V1 is a, it's a good weight, it's pretty intense. I'm trying to be really careful not to make up for lost ground. I was much stronger this summer before I broke my thumb and these past two weeks of being sick have also set me back a bit. So that's okay. I'm working where I am. I'll progress however I can progress. I'm not in a rush. I'm not going to do anything that's going to get me hurt. But I am going to focus more on the polling machine, upping the weight, increasing the intensity, and the toes to bar, knees to bar, sorry. Uh, I really think that's a magic exercise for skiing. I'll show you tomorrow what it looks like because I'm gonna be doing it every day and hopefully getting up to the point where I can do like 20 reps because it's a beast. All right, it's late, I gotta go home, tuck in and start the day bright and early. We've started to have some crazy warm weather here at the house, so it is Sugar maple season. Drill a little hole in the tree, put a tap, plastic tubing, drill a hole in the lid of a three liter soda bottle, and that baby is full of sap. Got a little more than 15 liters of sap from about six trees right in front of the house. We haven't even tapped the sugar bush yet because uh, we weren't sure if it was running, but it's running. So later today, I got to go up and tap the sugar bush. Mm. Oh, so good. I'm presently listening to Don't You Know Who I Am, which is a book about narcissism. And it's interesting. Uh, she's talking about how our culture has changed and is in her view, manifesting more narcissistic behavior and personalities, which looks like it may be the case upon observation. I finished up The Mask of Sanity yesterday, maybe. Uh, decent book, very long, but, um, but fascinating profiles of psychopaths in the 1940s, uh, or psychopathy, I should say. My review should be going up on Patreon soon. Anyway, this book is also pretty long. I think it's 19 hours. 
but I listen at one and a half speed uh, and take notes as I go. Anyway, it's uh, it's a warmish, windy day. I might head up to Prospect early before the snow turns to mush. Welcome to my studio. Ooh, the heater's on. This is my little writing office and film studio when I make videos. With my pretty view of the mountain. Since I broke a racing pole the other day, I've been scrambling for a replacement. And what I've decided, at least temporarily, is to use my roller skiing poles. They're made of a much heavier, stiffer, more resilient material. They can take a beating, but they slow down your ability to reload the poles for the next stroke because of their weight. And it's not just that they're heavier in general weight, but the swing weight is heavier too. So when you're swinging a pendulum, the more weight there is down at the bottom, the harder it is to swing that pendulum. So it's not just that you're lifting more, but you have to actually swing uh, the poles to get them back in position. And the swing weight uh, slows you down. Anyway, this is my temporary solution. They're a little bit shorter than the poles I've been using as well but for now, it'll keep me skiing. I've got to take my roller skiing tips off and they're glued on, so I'm gonna use a heat gun to heat up the plastic and the glue, get them off. And if you're using a heat gun, make sure you have something metallic, like an aluminum plate to put it on so you don't burn things. So you can get one of these at Dollar Tree. But uh, I also use these for glue guns because the glue is still hot even after you've unplugged it. Um, so always handy to have an aluminum sheet on hand. All right, here we go. try some of these little baskets. I don't even know where I got them, but they have a, a strange tip. And there we go. Now I've got to take straps out of my snow poles and put them into the roller ski poles and I've got a temporary solution. To show you the difference, this is my remaining race pole. You can see how tall it is when I'm standing on flat feet, well actually in shoes, but uh, and this is my roller ski pole. It's about three, three and a half inches shorter, which is maybe six, seven centimeters, I don't know. And when you're on skis and boots, you're taller. So maybe right about there. So this comes to there, that comes around to my eye. And the difference that makes is that with a longer pole, you can really get it in front of you like this and then engage your core when you're coming down. And with a shorter pole, you really can't lean into it. You're gonna end up bending at your waist to get the pole to make contact with the snow. So with a longer pole, you can lean forward and make contact easier. So we'll see, I'll ski on these for a bit and see how it goes. And then hopefully I can get a replacement for this guy. Wow, Massachusetts State Championships here at Prospect today. And it looks like the parking lot is absolutely full. <laughs> Holy cow. All right, where am I gonna park? For the last couple of years, the Massachusetts State Championships have been in Vermont because there's not enough snow in Massachusetts to host them. They bring up tour buses. Who are these schools? Boston. <laughs> they ski in Boston? Oh my God, it looks like a zoo up there.
I've got shorter, heavier roller ski poles with different straps. And I want to see how that affects my ability to get my arms up and loaded for the next push off. So I'm going to imagine that I'm skiing like Martin Fourcade from France and come up this hill, which is about an 8% slope. relatively light day of strength today. Just one minute sessions on the slide board, some knees to bar, feeling a little sore from yesterday's workout. Uh, so I like this one minute on the slide board and then one minute rest, that works well for me. And I'll just gradually increase those sessions over time. Finishing up the day with 30 minutes of Bigfoot light, which is 1.25 miles. 15.6% grade, and that is a grind. It really burns. <laughs> my heart rate doesn't get up that high, but my quads and glutes burn the whole time. It's, it's intense. I love it. Just finishing up a morning ski at Prospect. I wanted to get up before the warm temperatures hit. It's supposed to be in the 50s today and tomorrow. And while most people in town are celebrating the warm temps as a skier, not good. We still have a lot of snow, but the conditions are going to deteriorate pretty quickly, which is challenging because I'm trying to get ready for the world championships in March. And there have been delays due to my illness. Uh, and if the snow is not good, you really can't ski. Or if it disappears altogether, most of the races in the Northeast have been canceled. So I've just done one race so far. And I need to get some more racing under my belt to know if I'm indeed ready and should uh, even go <laughs> to Austria. One of the ways that I prepare myself to handle situations like this is to do what I call a humbling workout, which is where I immediately put myself in an uncomfortable situation and then gradually learn how to be okay with it. Today, that was starting my ski going straight up the mountain. And then I came down and I repeated, so two times up and down the mountain. I do this not just for the physical workout, but I do it for the mental and emotional workout. Because it's so easy to let a setback hold you back. But if you can learn how to work with discomfort and just accept it and then keep moving in the midst of discomfort, well, you can still make progress, even if things aren't going your way. And that's really what my project is all about. Humbling myself. Not needing things to feel good in order for me to feel good. So this is relevant to the book that I'm now listening to, which is Don't You Know Who I Am? <laughs> it's a book about narcissism. And this is something that I've spent a great deal of my life thinking about. Number one, because I've had many narcissists in my life. And there was a point where I suspected that I myself was a narcissist because I'm incredibly shy with a very fragile ego or identity. And therefore, I'm constantly worried about what other people think. Do they like me? Am I enough? You're always seeking validation, you're always seeking approval because you feel like you're going to fall off the social cliff all the time. I've never really felt like I've had permission to speak, uh, that I was not entitled just to walk into a room and to be myself. I felt that uh, I needed to do more. I needed to do something that would allow me just to be in the room, allow me to be in the conversation. So this has led to much of my striving early in life. 
And because I have that background of striving, I know how to push, I know how to train, I know how to be an athlete, I know how to deal with discomfort. So now, much later in life, and on the other side of a very serious depression, that depression related to a fragile, defeated identity, now it's about simply demonstrating process. So I try my best not to be in my identity when I train, when I race, when I make YouTube videos. I want to make sure that it's not about bolstering my identity because that is a bottomless pit that can never be filled, not even a little. So for me now, it's about being outside of my identity as often as I possibly can, recognizing when it's trying to push me, recognizing when it wants attention or validation and saying, oh, okay, I hear that. I feel that. It's okay. You're okay. We don't need validation. Let's just step. Yes, it's uncomfortable, but that's okay. Yes, you feel weak today. That's okay. Yes, nobody seems to be interested in you. That's okay. It doesn't matter. We're not here to bolster. We're here to engage in a process. Because that's what living is. Living is a verb. It is not a noun. So what does the act of living look like? It's not a finish line that you reach. It's not a happily ever after. Or I'll show them and then they'll see. It's let's be here now. Engaged in this process. Let's be humble. Which means let's step out of identity onto the ground and do the work even if it doesn't feel good. Let's just gently do the work. So that's what I hope these videos are about. Not about me showing anything about my value or worth, but rather here's a process that I'm engaged in and here's how I do it. And these are the results, but the results really aren't important to me, but I know they're important to other people, at least at this point. Uh, but that's not really my goal. My goal is simply to show you what a process looks like and how to be in uncomfortable situations and still take steps, still be gentle, and still have joy, even when things don't support the needs of your identity. You're okay. You're good. So anyway, yeah. <laughs> right. I'm going to head down the mountain. I've got a load of recycling to get rid of see what they have at the metal pile. Uh, I've been skiing with these short roller ski poles right here and that's also been very humbling because they're heavy and they're short and it's changed the way I ski and that's okay. I've been adapting to that as well. All right, heading off. I'll see you later in the day. Another day in the bank and I'm feeling like I'm bouncing back. I'm not as strong as I was three weeks ago, but I'll get there. After my ski, my mom and my sister came here to the studio and I put them through a workout. Um, kind of fun sharing my gym. Anyway, I just got off the polling machine where I was doing shorter sessions with heavier weight. I think I was doing more of that last year, uh, maybe just one to three minutes with heavier weight. So today I was doing five minute sets, which are good and burny. They burn, but I can go five minutes without a problem. So I did a bunch of those and some longer sessions as well. And uh, yeah, they're playing Stray Cat Strut beneath me. Uh, there's uh, the guy that owns the studio, rents the studio beneath me. Um, Wednesday nights, they have band practice. So I get to listen to them, which is fun. Anyway, heading home, big salad, smoothie, treadmill, do some work, catch up with clients, and uh, I'm going to do some more research into what I did last year for training leading up to the World Championships. What did that last month look like? All right, head on. So my new favorite activity, which I'm doing on a daily basis, is what I call knees to bar. In CrossFit, they have toes to bar, which I started doing, but it put a lot of strain on my lower back. So I switched it up to getting my knees to the bar, which is actually harder. And I do it slowly 
And interestingly enough, it's very similar to a cross-country ski pulling motion when you're doing a V2 technique, which is pulling with both arms equally at the same time. So this not only gets my core super activated, but it also ties in all the way through uh, front and back, back of the arms, lats, upper core, chest, biceps. It is a complete upper body workout. As with everything I do, my goal is to have good technique under control, not to swing, not to cheat. And if I can only do one or two of something because I have good technique, that's fine. I'll eventually be able to three, five, 10, 15 with good technique. So I wanna let my body come to a complete hang at the end of every rep. And I wanna be controlled and slow on the way up and on the way down. So knees to bar put myself in a complete hang, fully relaxed, toes dangling above the floor, and then engage my scapula and bring my knees up to the bar, touch, come down slowly, full hang, scapula, knees up, touch, slowly and down, and again, full relax, scapula, core, knees, and right here I'm engaging my lats, I'm actually pulling my elbows next to my side. So it's very much like ski pulling or a row or a pull up. So it starts with your scapula, moves into your core and finishes with just about every muscle in your upper body. And that is my new favorite activity. And when I'm done, I am pumped everywhere. It hits everything in your upper body. I'm finishing up a two and a half hour elliptical to a movie. It's a good grind, I'm getting nice and low. It's pretty late, it's almost 11 o'clock. And I've got 12 seconds to go. It was so warm today, I didn't want to go skiing. Uh, they have the Williams Carnival at Prospect tomorrow, and I didn't want to dig into the trails and make ruts. And the snow is super soft. You can kind of tear it up, gouge it, and then it might freeze in that position. So I might go up and watch the carnival tomorrow. See my old alma mater, Middlebury College Racing. And uh, there we go. I'm 20 seconds over. Whew. So two and a half hours of elliptical seven minutes of slide board, one minute on, one minute off. Uh, that's good, I'm gonna just keep growing that. And then I did a bunch of knees to bar, maybe, uh, maybe 15 sets. And uh, yeah, I think it's time to call it a day. Tomorrow I've gotta put up some more sugar taps uh, do more of the maple grove. Okay, time to go. It's 55 degrees right now. Crazy. But I've got to get some wood. Bring it up to the house because it's going to drop into the 20s tonight. I'm tired. No part of me wanted to get out of bed, let alone come down here and do this in the rain, but that part of me, again, is not the one who gets to experience this because I like the sound of rain. I like the feel of rain on me. I like the movement. The more I was walking, the better I felt. So funny how our predictive engine can be so wrong about what our experiences are gonna be like. This is actually really Nice, watching the rain on the blueberry orchard, hearing that on the roof. I have a tin roof on my apartment, so the sound often puts me to sleep. I've been in the studio for about an hour now, uh, checking in with clients and getting some other things done, but I've noticed that there's a sense of gloominess hanging in 
the room. It's gray outside, it's rainy, it's chilly in here. I keep the temperature at 55 degrees. And I noticed that I go towards certain activities when I feel that way. And I caught myself in the midst of doing something that I thought I would share. Uh, I was getting my computer ready to do some editing. And I have a little external SSD drive and a tiny little USB-C cable. And they live in this little bag along with some other cables and connectors, things that I need to travel with. And I found myself just opening this zipper, sensually touching the zipper handle and just experiencing that. And then reaching slowly into the fabric, feeling it, listening for it, looking into the bag, gently finding the SSD, pulling it out with care, placing it on my desk, somewhat parallel to my laptop. Same with the cable, taking it out, holding it gently, respectfully, placing it on the desk parallel to the SSD. Now, do they have to be parallel? Do I have to take time with zippers and bags and fabric and all these things? No, I don't have to. It's not an obsession or a compulsion. And it's not about control. I'm not trying to control my environment. I'm just in a state where I have some degree of agency. So this is something that I have practiced for many years now, that when I feel the environment kind of pressing in on me, I push back just a little bit, just right here in my local space. What can I do here in my local space to create some sense of agency? Like I have the ability to impact my environment in a tiny, tiny way right here right now and being very careful and gentle and attentive with a bag and a zipper and a hard drive and a cable and then with the notepad that's next to my desk my little recorder I line things up I organize them so I feel like okay my environment is safe I have the ability to affect it I have the ability to reduce the state of entropy here uh, and Whenever I find myself in that state of like, oh, wow, it's too much, I can't do, it's gloomy, I'm just going to give up. It's like, well, don't give up on everything. I don't have to deal with everything. I just have to deal with something right here. What is it? Ah, my bag. I'm going to feel that fabric. I'm going to listen to the zipper. I'm going to touch my hard drive now. I'm going to take the cable and I'm going to line it up a certain way and I'm going to put it in the slot and I can hear it even though there's trucks going by in the rain outside and then I'm going to slowly connect it to the laptop and there it goes I'm not in a rush I'm not trying to get the job done this is actually an experience this is a moment and I'm gonna have many of those moments and slowly gradually I'm gonna do more and more of this in other parts of the studio. And then the studio is gonna feel more and more like home. Uh, because when you walk in, you're walking into another energy, you're walking into another space that you haven't touched or affected yet. So little by little, I'm gonna wander around and do small, sensual, mindful tasks. And that's going to make the studio feel more and more like it's a part of me in an empowered state. So. That's uh, how my morning is going right now. How about yours? <laughs> to show you what my desk setup looks like, I've got a standard warm bulb there, which feels kind of nice. But then I've got these two super bright, super white light panels to simulate daylight, which is good in the morning, especially on a gray day. So when I come in in the morning, I have these light panels, which are 5,000 lux a piece. I've uh, lowered the brightness on this, uh, on the camera, so that you could actually see them, otherwise they just blow everything out. Um, I got them for like 39 bucks a piece off B&H Photo. They've got weighted bases, 
They've got a little twisty thing so you can raise them or lower them. A little wing nut so you can change the angle and you can also adjust the color temperature in addition to the brightness. So at night I can make them very warm to get rid of the white or blue light and during the day I can brighten them up to simulate daylight and they allow me to sit here and get 10,000 lux of light coming into my eyes which is a really good thing to do on a gray gloomy day. Today was a good, solid, medium effort of strength. Loving the neutral pull-ups and the polling. B2 is a pretty intense weight and I'm following through more. That's what the K is. It's a Kruger technique and the B means I'm strapped in with a band, so I'm leaning forward. It's starting to feel strong again. Uh, doing sets of eight pull-ups was pretty comfortable until the last set or two and the polling uh, with that new, more aggressive Kruger style. That feels good too. I could probably go a lot longer. So I'm gonna start ramping that up and I feel powerful. And my body is changing again pretty quickly. So maybe Austria is still on the table. Really cool icy patterns today. I'm just finishing up a listening session to Don't You Know Who I Am, and she's talking about wealth and entitlement and social media, uh, the desire to appear affluent, the desire to appear as if you are higher status. And I'm thinking about this in relation to this project and what I do, and from the start, I've wanted to be transparent and honest and show people what the actual process looks like, what the real steps look like and what the results look like and not to inflate anything. If I fall down, I want people to see me falling down. If I'm struggling, I want people to see me struggling. Not because it makes a good story, but because it's true. It's honest. It's what the path looks like. I don't ever want it to appear as if uh, it's easy for me. Although it is easy if you step out of the identity narrative that so many of us are trapped inside of. But uh, that doesn't mean that there isn't hard work to do. And it doesn't mean the bad things don't happen. It just means that you can take those bad things and simply work with the step right in front of you rather than the story of how everything has gone awry. Anyway, yeah, this book has gotten me to reflect a lot on my experience on social media and one of the reasons that I no longer post on Facebook or Instagram. Um, even though it might be to the advantage of my business, I just don't really like being part of that world. YouTube is different. Uh, and I'm, I'm not sure why I feel that way, but YouTube seems different, even though it's getting more and more crowded with people that just make inane videos where they're just copying somebody else's content again and again and again. Anyway, up to the studio, do some work, then up to Prospect to watch the Williams Carnival and try to ski on the solid ice. Nobody ever came to fix that beep got an elevator behind me and it's speaking quite loudly because it's morning. I'm tired. It's cold. I've got a heavy bag in my hand. So I deserve the elevator, right? It's interesting how on cold days or rainy days or beepy days, how the elevator wants me to succumb. But one step at a time and my legs are tired from elliptical, but that's okay, just one, one step at a time, and I'll get there, no rush. It's like a tailgate party. 
Johnny Hagenbuck right here, number one. All right, way to go, looking good, looking good. After watching Johnny go up that hill, I'm realizing I really have to up my strength game. <laughs> this kid's got a nice leg drive. All right, way to go, looking good. Really nice leg drive, he gets great glide. Wow, very hoppy. All right, way to go, you damn. All right, way to go, are you on age? Way to go, Williams. Fantastic skiing today and so much fun to watch the college racers. Oh my God, they're strong. <laughs> so I lost my course record on one of the more challenging hill sections called Workout. It's about half a mile long. And I did it in two minutes and 20 seconds. That was my Strava CR. And somebody today did it in 208. So beat me by 12 seconds and I'm no longer even in the top 10. And that's exciting because it's not that much. And now I get to chase after it. And if I can get close to uh, the 208, I think I'll be ready for Austria. Live free or die, New Hampshire. <laughs> For dinner, lentils, quinoa, and broccoli. Well, we got two roads. It is Sunday, which means that I've got to get a quick ski in before Sunday brunch. And I'm thinking a lot about the racers that I watched in the carnival yesterday and just how much power they ski with, men and women. And it's given me some good technique goals to work on. You can watch people on TV slash YouTube and you can get an idea of what they're doing, but you have to see them in person. You have to actually see them move by you to know how much power they're using and how steep the hill is that they're skiing up. Uh, and how fast they're going. So that's something you can really only get in person because you can watch a World Cup race and it looks like they're just tooling along, but they are moving so fast. They just make it look easy because they're so strong. Uh, anyway, after the race, I skied a bit with Patrick Weaver, who's an old friend of mine. We were rivals back in high school in college skiing. Uh, Pat went on to become, I think, at least two-time Olympian national champion. Um, anyway, he's the coach of the University of Vermont, and we had a good chat. Anyway, I'm off to ski. I'll see you after brunch. No, she's not related to the ketchup. <laughs> it must taste better than other water. Mama. Across the street from the mill, they often put stuff up for free. That's free wood right there. I'll take it apart and use the wood. My body is telling me it's time for a nap. 
I was gonna hop on the elliptical, but I'm having a hard time keeping my eyes open. So that means nap. I'm not gonna push through that. So 20 minutes of nap. The computer is processing the video that I took today of uh, V2ing up the same hill that I filmed Remy Drolet and uh, Johnny Hagenbach. Um, I need a new computer, it's so slow. It takes forever to even process like 19 seconds of footage. Um, yeah, but anyway, I'm gonna take a nap, let that process, and uh, then we'll see if my body wants to get on the elliptical. I don't know, I'll find out. Another week of training is done and I'm starting to catch back up to previous weeks, but haven't been feeling great, so I've taken it light today, just 15 minutes of polling. Uh, B2 is an intermediate amount of weight, it's not easy. And using the new Kruger technique, which is why I put a K, arms are out in front of you, reaching more, pulling, engaging the core as you come down. That's, uh, it feels good. It feels aggressive and I like it. So I'm gonna build up the amount of time that I can do that technique. And I'm bouncing back. Still clearing out sinuses and lungs, but feeling a lot better. Skiing pretty quick. I'm more confident about worlds as a possibility. I've got to pull that trigger soon. Like this week, I've got to make the decision. And I need to reach out to some people in the know to see if uh, they think it's a good idea. My old college buddy, Zach Caldwell of Caldwell Sport. I'm going to email him tomorrow and see if I can set up a conversation. Anyway, um, yeah, back up to over 18 hours this week. So gradually ramping back up towards the three hour mark and feeling pretty good. Um, but I'm gonna call it a night, go home, have a few calls with clients tonight and uh, a smoothie awaits. See you in the next one.